No price talk and no Lambos. This is not another crypto podcast. Welcome to Ignition. I'm your host, Gillian Gotzel, and each week we will be looking at the problems solved by blockchain. I'll be going deep, deep with the people building the apps and communities which are changing the world around us. Hello and welcome to the show with me, Gillian Gotzel. Today my guest is Pete Wood, the CEO of CoinBurp, or CoinBurp as I like to call it. Welcome to the show. Hi, Joe. Okay, so this is an important video that I wanted to make, and I have to say two things at the very start. First of all, this is not financial advice at all. We're not giving anyone advantage of financial advice. We're just talking about something that really knocked me for seven recently. And secondly, you're the CEO of a company that's raising money, and I'm working for you guys. So again, mm-hmm. this is not financial advice. But the reason why I wanted to talk to you was that I was applying. I've been the last two and a half years. You're in the crypto space. I've been in the crypto space the last two and a half years. And I was applying crypto interpretation to what you were doing. And it is, it's totally different. So can I start from the very beginning? Can you tell me a little bit about CoinBurp and what it is? Yeah, sure. So CoinBurp is a super easy cryptocurrency trading platform. Uh, we're targeting low confidence users, but we, it's not to say we would turn away uh, more confident users, but we feel there's a, an untapped market of retail investors who have struggled to get into this space. So yeah, we're, we're trying to make it super fun, uh, easy and friendly for people to buy their first crypto. I mean, it is. The UX is so easy. It is like, it's like click and point and play. It's not like, you know, when you go on to Coinbase or one of the other exchanges, there's all these figures and these things, you know, oh, what am I doing here? And it's like <laughs> quite scary. Which bits are you going to do? It's almost like child's play. It's cartoon driven. It's big, huge icons. And it's like click here. So you can make a mistake. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, the amount of time, the amount of brainstorms and meetings we had to come to a, a super slick uh, user interface like we have there, we put tons of effort and time into, into building something that we hope hope uh, customers find very easy to use. Yeah, no, I mean, it definitely is. I mean, go and look, it's coinburp.com, so that's cool. Thanks. Dot com, yes. Okay, so now, your company, you've, you've had a brokerage before, Bitcoin's how you got into this space. Mm-hmm. You have a very successful company, you're trading over, like, was it 9 million with 3 million profit? So why does a profitable company need to raise funds? I mean, I have huge ambitions. I do believe we, I will get there eventually, uh, but it depends on how fast I want to get there. I, I want people to be on part of this journey. I want, I want the investment to, to come in earlier. For me to get to where I want to get, we need some investment at the start, especially for the marketing to get our name out there. It's just the number one issue for new products. It's about, um, yeah, people knowing your, your brand and getting used to it. But where I want to be, in, I need to get it as fast as possible. And that means bringing some investment externally. Okay. So how much of a company are you selling? So we have a target on um, Crowdcube, crowdcube.com uh, forward slash coin. But if you have a look at that, we've, we've currently raised just over 200K. The target on there is 300,000. But we, we've had so much interest recently. We're still in a private, private phase um, where only people that we know personally, uh, we can send the link to to invest. We had so much interest that... 300k may we may surpass 300k and decide to give up additional equity in the company but um, we're not quite there yet and we're still having discussions okay so so i understand very clearly and this is where i want to sort of really get down to the meat of the matter here mm. so you're actually giving away shares you're giving equity in the company people investing are going to own a piece of your company okay so it's not tokens it's not like things that could or come or go so you're a real life regulated company that files its accounts in london and people can buy into it. Like, I mean, this is like traditional investment, but you're in the crypto space. It's a little bit different. So you're selling 1.9%, I think, of the company. How much is each share worth? It, so the company valuation is, is 15 million. So depending on how many or how much money you put in, it, it's, uh, um, it equates to a certain proportion. So it's difficult to say that a share would be £10 or £15. It's more to do with how much you invest against the valuation of the company. So we've got a static number. 15 million is the valuation. Depending on where you come in, it can be as little as ten pounds. You can invest quite high amounts if you want to. Um, yeah, if you want to invest a large amount, but yeah, depending on that, uh, you get a, diff- a different proportion of the company. But it's all based around the fifteen million valuation. Okay, and this is unusual too, as well. It's part of this whole new way of crowdfunding that people can actually buy equity, and the starting point being ten pounds sterling is very small. That's pocket money. That's your you can steal it from your child. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bad thing you do. It's, it's, it's quite nice, right? And the nice thing about it is these are called Class B shares, am I right? So although you own part of the company, you have no voting rights. You, you have no say in the company. You, you, just, you have just invested in the company and you have a share allocation as per how much money you put in. 
well, actually, we're actually going to give Class A shares. So you're going to actually be on the same share structure as, as founders. So on the exact same level. Oh, I got it wrong. Yeah, it's actually an improvement. Yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. So you actually have got, is that unusual? It is very unusual. The reason we, we've done it this way, and we did have the option of doing Class A and Class B, where usually Class B means you don't have the voting rights, you don't have a say in, in the direction the company's going. But I think to bring... To truly bring people on board with our vision and our and our mission to, to bring crypto to the masses, it's only fair to bring them on the same or a level playing field as the founders. So wow. if you come on board, um, you will gain from dividends if we, if we decide to do dividends in the future. But yeah, you're, you're on the same playing field. Do you know something? You're actually answering all my questions the wrong way, but in a good way. <laughs> because I had understood there was Class B, there was no voting, but you're actually going to get the Class A shares. Awesome. So when people invest and you actually, will they get a certificate? Will, it, will there be a legal document comes out? It's like the real world. Mm-hmm. And you can put it on your wall or put it in your safe. And if you lose your your share cert, it'll still you'll still be recorded, presumably, in the legal office. So it's actually it's a very safe thing in that sense. Now, you're a private company, so... I've got, you know, I've got my, my, my shares invested in you. But to get the money out, how can I redeem my investment? There's, really, there's only two ways to get some of the money out. We either depend, we either decide at some point in the uh, in the business that we're doing so successful that we want to want to pay some dividends out. So we have to pay the same proportion of dividends to everyone, um, whether it's me taking out, whether it's a um, an investor who's invested ten pounds. We have to pay some dividends out. The other uh, option, which is the the one that everyone's after, is the the sell off. So the three to five years, whatever it may be, when a company comes knocking at your door and comes with a big fat check and wants to buy your company out, then that's when most companies see the big returns or so most investors see the big returns on their investment. Wow. So that's really interesting. So you are the class A shares. And one of the things I was going to say, because it says that when you have to go on and talk about the crowd cube experience too, as well, it has to check that you're not a totally dopey investor. Like I was <laughs> yesterday before I went through all this and uh, it said, you know, do you expect dividends? And the actual answer is normally no. Mm-hmm. Startups do not normally give dividends, but you're not ruling that out. Definitely not ruling it out. I'm, I'm definitely not committing to it either. Um, we have no. to play it by ear. It depends. I mean, I, I want to grow this company as fast and and, and, and strong and, and get to the get to the milestones that we've put down in our business plan on our roadmap. And sometimes that means none of us get pay out and we just stay committed and reinvest the money that we, we've made. But there are situations potentially in the future where we decide we want to pay dividends. But it's not the norm. It's not the norm, but there is always a possibility. No, no, I mean, that's, that's two things you've said to me. That, well, actually, three things. You're in the crypto business, and you are. You're an exchange, buying and selling crypto. Actually, there's four things. One, you're making <laughs> it easy, which is very unusual, right? Secondly, you're, regu- you're, you're raising money through a regulated form of finance. So it's it's all very much above board. It's not these tokens and all this FOMO stuff. Thirdly, you're offering Class A shares. So there's a voting rights associated with the, the shares. And fourthly, you're not ruling out dividends. Because, again, normally startups don't normally do this. So you're saying... You're not promising, of course, but you're saying there might be a point where you might do that. Potentially. Yeah. And because they're all class A, everybody will get the same. Wow, okay. So with the Crowdcube, I logged on the other day and um, you have to provide your KYC, which is know your customer, which is basically identification and proof of address. <laughs> Uploaded up line. Is, is there in the Crowdcube system, there's a human being looking at that, is there, or it's automated? It's going to confirm that. I'm not sure how they do it. I mean, as a regular, in terms of the process of checking the ID and proof of address, I know that as a regulated company, regulated by the FCA in the UK, um, any if they're dealing with investments, they have to do some form of KYC with uh, or know your customer controls. But in terms of whether it's a robot or, or manual process by by Crowley, I'm not sure to be honest. Okay, but it's it's done. But the, the financial regulator insists that it's done, so it's it's not funny money coming to the system. I was simply there's a whole bunch of, of correct things that go through the questionnaire, and one of them says, "Do you, can you badger the company to buy back your shares at any point?" <laughs> <laughs> that is not the case, obviously, because as you explained, it, you know, there's normally an event that triggers uh, the buyback. It could be an exit or a, you know a merger or something like that. Mm-hmm. Another interesting point too as well, again, this is me with my with my blockchain crypto head on. I was going, it was a private sale. I'm going, so where are the discounts? Sure. Because obviously when you're selling tokens, the private sales are all heavily discounted, but not in this case because you can't, it's illegal. You, you can't do discounts just for early investors. Yeah, as uh, again, we're running through Crowdcube, they're regulated. We, it has to be in uh, an equal playing field for every single investor. So we can't give... Um, we, we can't give any bonuses uh, to us as the first 100 people that invest. You're going to get more shares than the, the following 100 people. It doesn't work like that, unfortunately. Everyone who invests, whether it's at the start or the end, get the same offer. 
Okay. And what's nice too as well, what I do like about it is it's regulated, right? So it's a, it's a different ball game. You can't, there's no, no secondary market. You can't take your shares and go and sell them elsewhere. It's not a public company. There's not a token exchange where you can, where you can go and, and do that. But because it's it's regulated, it's, well, well companies can fail too as well. I mean, you, you could fail. You could in the morning turn around and go belly up, mm-hmm. go coin broke. That would be the end of all our investments. <laughs> um, but, but it might not. And certainly if you look at it, let's just say you had a sum of money that, you, and again, you only invest that which you can afford to lose, which is the golden rule of investing, mm-hmm. whether it's your tenner or your hundred euros, whatever. Mm-hmm. But at the moment, people aren't getting money in, in, in bank accounts, you know, with fiat. There's this minus, there's minus figures. I was told recently to take some money out of my credit union because the credit union was being charged negative interest on my money. Sure. So I had to move someplace else. So it's, we live in a very wor- weird world. So although you can't, you know, it's only projections. There's not no guarantees or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But if everything goes according to plan, the return should be significantly more, well, than zero. <laughs> That's yeah, hardly. I mean, there's there's a couple of really key differentiations, I, I think, that we, what we have on offer than a lot of other companies have on offer. The very first thing to, to note, which I, I probably should have said at the start of the video, is that it's not only an investment into CoinBird, but you also invest into BitBroker. The company which I formed in 2014, done a, over 100, 120 million turnover, I think by now, uh, three million pounds in profit. So you're actually investing in a top level holding company called Bitburp, which is the combination of both Bitbroker and Coinburp. So Bitbroker is already a successful, uh, proven track record company operating in the crypto space, and then you've got this new, um, great uh, concept of, a, of the, the trading platform of Coinburp. So you benefit from both. And very few people in this space, in the crypto space, that's only been around 10 years, 10, 11 years from when Bitcoin was first formed, can say that they've been dealing for five years. I've been, I've been in the business for half the time it's ever been ever existed. Um, there's very few of me around. And not only that, I, I have a track record of, of building a successful company with only a thousand pounds. I mean, I didn't, I didn't start, start with much. I'm an entrepreneur from the ground up and I've got to this point so far. And I hope people believe in, in my ambition and my drive and, where, where I look to take the company to. Well, thank you very much. As I say, the thing that it was so funny, we, uh, we were at loggerheads and I'm going, well, what's happening here? Where's the secondary market? Because you see, when you get into the, the token and the, the ICOs and the STOs and all this stuff, it's, it's a whole different goal, ball game. So now we're taking a crypto business that's successful and putting it into a regu- regulated market. And the really nice thing that I really, really like is that the entry point is very little. Oftentimes to invest in your blue chip, pretty much, you'd have to be a, an accredited investor. And now you're saying you can take a small amount of money if you want to, and you can put it, invest in your company. And you're asking people to come along on the journey with you. Exactly. So as little as £10, we, we are targeting the retail market. So it'd be silly not to, to focus our fundraising on the retail market. It, it aligns very well with our with our goals. So yeah, that's what we're doing. As little as £10. Um, and yeah, we hope a lot of people invest. Wow. Well, I've already invested my £10, disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm last of the big spenders. I may go back and buy some more, but um, I'm looking forward to getting my search. And, and when when does all that happen? When, when does the sale finish? So what, what's the time scale? So at this current day that we're recording, we've got we've got about eight days left in our private uh, raise, and then it will go public on Crowdcube. And what that means is they will do the email marketing to their mailing lists. They're going to plaster our name all over the social medias, and the majority of companies. In Crowdcube, they get they get most of their investment in the public public uh, phase of, of the race. So uh, we've only got 100k or so, well under 100k left in, in in the kitty at the minute for the 300k target. Potentially, when it gets close, we might increase that. But um, my advice is, if you're interested, try and get in there early before everyone else snaps it up. Okay, wow, that's amazing. And again, I want to stress, we are not giving a financial advice. I just wanted to have a conversation with you because I was getting everything back to front. Arseways, as they say in Ireland. (laughs) (laughs) So I thought if I am, and I spoke to some other friends in this business, and they were thinking along the same lines, I'm going, well, let's let's talk about this. So thank you so much for me. It's actually crystal clear now. It makes sense. And I wish you every success. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks very much, Jill, for giving me the chance. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks.